with the S&P 500 still in pause mode, I think it's a good time to take a step back and look at how this good start over the last few weeks can turn into a more substantial uptrend. And one of the things we always look at are the seven steps needed to turn a downtrend into an uptrend. And so number one, we know that's just simply hold that support or establish support in a market that's in a free fall market. And so recently, of course, October 27th was a low point held there. And then the upside of follow through was huge. As we know, five 1% advances over the next 12 days. We saw a pause right under 4,400. That was able to form the higher low, a bullish pattern as well, and the breakout. Now, we still haven't achieved the first upside target, but once we do, we want to see, of course, this happen again. It's so a lot of times before you can achieve an upside target of one bullish pattern, others then get formed. And this really is what's had occurred over the last few weeks where we just talked about, this is October 27th. This is obviously the strong follow through, the pause, the breakout, and this target is 46.75. Still not there yet, but of course, getting closer. Now, along the way, one of the pauses, we could frame this as a bullish flag pattern as we did, and that has a target up near 4,700. And then much bigger picture is that we could talk about the last few weeks of sideways movement, so to speak, as a right shoulder. Now, we know that there's still a risk of this happening and market coming in a little bit more and forming a right shoulder down here. In general, though, we can see how this structure can remain in place and have a target up above 5,000. So one of the things we always do at Cap Thesis in our daily note opening look is just always profile the live patterns, both on a bullish standpoint and bearish. And really just by looking at this gives you an idea of what kind of market that we're in. Because for the longest time from August or even from late July all the way to late October, we only had say one or two of these live at a time and none of them hit their upside targets. So we're still really in a waiting mode where there are many more live bearish patterns. Now, the biggest ones didn't achieve their downside targets, but smaller ones along the way did, right? And so we knew that what kind of market that we were in. Now, on occasion, you know, the biggest ones will come off and come on a lot of times. So we're still waiting to see if this current breakout attempt is going to come into play. Now, the other part of that is that for bullish patterns to work, you just need lower two-way volatility. Now, we really pound the table on this theme it's because the VIX, of course, you know, responds in one way to what the market does. It doesn't give us a sense of when there's upside volatility, right? When a lot of big 1% moves, because when you have a lot of 1% advances, it usually is because of a response to 1% declines. So what we want for an extended uptrend is a low amount of 1% overall moves, right? An absolute basis, but of course have more 1% advances versus losses. And all of that then leads to successful bullish patterns, with the premise being that once you get a breakout, there are fewer chances of whipsaws to have that those breakout points violated, right? And that's why it's important to see really like a boring tape after a while, right? And so, you know, we look at this, of course, just from this table. And again, very easy to see, but extremely helpful at the same time, where we take this big picture view and we see that so far we've had 63 1% moves this year, which is just about half of what we had all of last year, right? And so again, there were some instances here where we got uh, more than, than usual, especially at the beginning of the year, but really has dropped off since then on an overall basis. So it's not surprising to see that there are about 30 fewer 1% gains. Now think about that because 2022, the S&P ended up down just about 19%, right? So we have 30 fewer 1% gains and the S&P is up about 19% right now. So we're talking about basically a 40% swing in performance with a lot fewer 1% advances. So we know we don't need these to occur. Right? It was fun to see all this occur at the beginning of this move like this, but explosive action typically leads to a boring tape if in fact that's going to then extend to a longer term uptrend. And that's important to realize because all of the best moves that we've had over the last decade, right? They all had those same characteristics. Going back to 2015, right? A lot of volatility, a lot, a lot of bullish patterns worked out. That changed after the low in February 2016, which extended all the way through 2018, right? Or the beginning of 2018 before the vol implosion. And really we had a, a 
know, back and forth, ultimately lower year in 2018. But again, things changed as 1% advances started to decline again. And, and also 1% declines, of course, was led to good bullish patterns, successful bullish patterns. We know what happened in COVID, but after that, same type of thing. Still had explosive movement on the way up, but eventually I gave way to consistent advance. And of course, all that changed in 2022. So we can see how all this plays out. And again, we don't we shouldn't worry about the day-to-day -day action as much, but it's important to keep track of because we can get a sense of how this is trending and what should happen right after a huge start to this move. If this is going to, to end up extending into 2024, you want to see more of what's happened over the last few weeks where kind of a boring tape, but which allows more breakouts to work and a more consistent uptrend. That's it for today. Don't forget to check out these videos and subscribe. I'll talk to you next time. Thank you.